In this video, I will show you how to create this simple application in SaltCorn. This is a to-do list where every item has a description and a flag to tell us whether it is done. All I can do is add new items and mark items as done. Building this really simple application will show you how to model data and how to use the drag and drop builder to create views and forms for that data. If you just want a to-do list application without building, or if you want to see what the final product looks like, you can install the to-do list as a pack. If you install this pack in an empty SaltCorn instance, you will get the same to-do list that we will be building now. But today we are not going to cheat, we will be building the to-do list from scratch. Let's get started. I will assume that you have a blank installation. You can get that either by going to saltcorn.com and creating a new application. Or you may have it installed on your desktop computer. First, I'm going to create the data tables. This is where the to-do items are stored in a database. We will need one table for to-do items, and they have to store both the description of the item and whether it is done. I create the table and then the two fields. For the fields, I have to choose a type. Descriptions are strings, And the done field is stored as a boolean, which means a true, false, or yes, no value. Now that I've defined the fields in the table, as a last step, I want to look at the access rights for the table. Here, I'm going to say that you have to be a logged in user to be able to read and write this table. That's it. Now I've created my table and the data model is done. Next, I need to create my views. We need two views, a view to be able to enter new to-do items and a view to list our existing items. I will start with the form to enter new items because that will allow me to put some to-do items into my database, which I need to test the other view. I will give this new view the name edit to-dos. Every view is an instantiation of some template. In SaltCorn, a view is this, a view template applied to a table with some specified options. There are a couple of view templates built in and then you can get more by installing plugins. Here, I'm going to show you how to use the edit view template applied to the to do items table. And again, I make this view available only for logged in users. Once I've specified these basic parameters of the new view, I'm sent to the drag and drop builder to build my form. There is already a sensible form generated for you based on the fields in the table. But because today I want to show you how to build things from scratch in this tutorial, let's get rid of this generated form. Over here on the right, there is a list of the layers in the view. If you've ever used Photoshop, you may remember the layers and it works in a similar way. To get rid of everything, select the top item and then click delete contents. Now we have a blank form. To put things back into the form, I drag them from the toolbar, this vertical column over on the left. Let's try it with some text. I just click, hold down the mouse button and then drop it in this main area, which is my canvas. The green bar that shows up shows you where the new item will be positioned, and then I let go of the mouse button. Then when I click the new element, it will be selected. You can see that it has a blue stitched border. 
in the layers it is selected and beneath the layers the settings for that element. I can change the text in the settings or by double clicking on the text in the canvas And for the text, I can also change the style. In building our form, I would like a column structure where I have a label on the left, the text input in the middle, and a save button on the right. I drag in the column structure. To get to the settings, I click either in the middle in between the two columns or I go to the layers and click the columns here. I want three columns. The full space is divided into 12 columns and you set how much space you want in each column except for the last column which gets the remaining space from the previous ones. In this case, I want a short label on the left then I want a lot of space in the middle where I will be entering the new description. And then there are three spaces left for the save button. I drag and drop the text to the first column. Then to be able to change the description field in the database, I drag field into the middle column and then click it to be able to change its settings. We want to make sure that we have the right field and then we have to set the field view. The purpose of the field view is that you can edit or show fields in different ways. In our case, the description field is a string and it has two possible edit fields. Edit and text area. You can pick whichever one you like. The text area is taller and allows for editing strings with more than one line. Here I will go just for edit, which is just a simple input entry box. Finally, I drag the action to the last column. and make sure I have the right action, save, which is the only one available here. We're done with the drag and drop building of this form. and click the next button. Here I get asked about the fields that I didn't put in the form. Remember, our table has a done field and it needs a value. So here I can specify the value for new entries, which is not done, so I leave it unselected. That's it, my form is done and I can run it and enter a new row for the database. When I save, I get taken to an inconvenient place, but we will fix that when we've built the other view. This is the list view, which I will build now. We call it list to do's and its template is the list template which will create a grid a bit like a spreadsheet. The way you specify columns is a bit different from the drag and drop builder. Each column is one of these boxes and you can add new columns with the add button and change the position or delete them with these move up and down and cross out for delete buttons. 
I will keep these two fields for description and done, but I will add an action to toggle the done state. But you have other options like linking to different views or displaying information from related tables. Down here at the end we get to choose a view that can be used to create new items. Here I select the edit view that I created before. And then I have an option as to how it is displayed. I'll leave that at the link and we can see what happens. That's it. And now we run the view. And I see the to do item that I entered earlier. I can click the toggle button and the done value is switched. Here is the link to add new items. You can see when I fill it in, I still get redirected to an inconvenient place. So let's fix that. I go through the steps and the configuration for the edit view. The form. And at the last step, I get asked what view I should go to when the form has been filled in. Here I can now select the list view. And then when I enter new items, I go back to the list, which is a lot better. There's one final way in which I can improve the user experience, the flow of entering new items. If I change the way the view used to create new items is displayed, to embedded, instead of the link, the form is shown directly at the bottom of the list. That makes it a lot easier to enter new items. That's it. We're done. This is the application I showed you at the beginning. To summarize, the salt corn approach to building applications is first to define your data model with tables and then to create views by applying view templates to tables and specifying the options, which often involves using the drag and drop builder. To summarize, the SaltCon approach to building applications is first to define your data model with tables and then to create views by applying view templates to tables and specifying the options, which often involves using the drag and drop builder. We then use views inside views, as you saw in the embedded view, to create new items, to build more complex user interfaces. By activating more powerful view templates from the plugin system, which can include maps, Kanban boards, rich text editors, you can build up complete applications.